Tonight, I want to speak with you about our nation's unprecedented response to the coronavirus outbreak that started in China and is now spreading throughout the world. Today, the World Health Organization officially announced that this is a global pandemic. All over China, people are on the move to visit relatives over the Lunar New Year holidays. It's likely that somewhere the coronavirus is traveling among them. Authorities believe the outbreak of the coronavirus can be traced back to a seafood market in Wuhan. The wet market linked to the initial outbreak remains boarded up and guarded by security officers. Images of the market from early December taken by a concerned customer indicate it was apparently selling other live wild animals, including skinned birds, snakes, and raccoon dogs. Health officials say this strain of the coronavirus has been spread to humans through exposure in handling of animals at the market. Only Chinese investigation teams have been given access to the market. There is now likely little left inside for the World Health Organization to examine when they are eventually allowed back to Wuhan. So far, it does not appear that this disease is easily transmittable between people. If the virus turns out to be readily transmissible from human to human, then we'll have a much larger problem on our hands. New video sent to CBS News claims to show hospital staff wearing protective gear. I'm sure history will record Lee Wen Leong as the hero of this entire pandemic. He tried to warn fellow medics over a messaging app at the end of December, telling them to wear protective clothing. Police then made him sign a letter which accused him of making false comments that had severely disrupted the social order. Meet a doctor now, a scientist out of Hong Kong who says she was doing research on COVID-19 in December and January that could have saved lives. But she says her supervisor swept it under the rug. Our government already knows that before the end of December, there were human to human transmission. At least 14 healthcare workers in China have now contracted the virus after treating infected patients. China says the number of people infected by a mysterious respiratory virus has more than tripled over the weekend. There are now 218 confirmed cases of the new coronavirus. Officials now say more than 400 people have been sickened and nine people have died. The death toll from the coronavirus rising to at least 41, all in China. More than 1,300 infected. Am I confident about China and the authorities here to be able to contain this? No, it has not been contained to begin with. I spoke with President Xi of China, and he's working very hard on this. It's a tremendous problem, but they're very capable, and they'll, they'll get to it. The virus now spreading, reaching Australia and Europe with confirmed cases in France and nine other countries, including the U.S. In Spain, for example, where 1,646 people are confirmed to have coronavirus, almost 1,500 people now have the coronavirus in Germany and in France the second worst affected country in Europe after Italy. There have been nearly 400 new cases in the past 24 hours. The first death from coronavirus here in the United States 
President Trump and his team confirming the fatality at a news conference this afternoon and warning Americans not to panic. This is certainly not a moment for panic or high anxiety. It is a moment for vigilance. Health officials confirm four new cases of COVID-19 in Illinois. Health officials are watching more than 60 other possible cases. This brings the total number of Americans diagnosed with COVID-19 to at least 69. Cases at 2,100 senior facilities nationwide. Nearly 700 dead. California now surpassing 10,000 deaths from COVID. Tonight with hospital morgues and funeral homes overflowing. Los Angeles bringing in refrigerated trucks to store the bodies. Paramedics telling us ambulances are waiting up to 17 hours outside hospitals because there are no beds. More than 20,000 Americans have died from COVID-19. The death toll in the U.S. now officially topping 110,000. Here in the U.S. passes 160,000. The U.S. reporting more than 371,000 American lives lost. America is racking up milestones that no other country would want to claim. The world's richest nation is now the world's most affected. Effective tomorrow at close of business, Arizonans are directed to limit their time away from home, except to conduct or participate in essential activities or essential services. So what is the plan of action? Flatten the curve, flatten the curve, flatten the curve. I am formally announcing a disaster proclamation for Illinois. The federal government can be extremely helpful here, and we need the federal government's help. Our goal here is to protect the lives of those we love most and to ensure the health care system has the capacity to provide them with the care and comfort they deserve. I want folks to understand this is going to affect your daily life. The COVID crisis has impacted so many industries this year as the virus forced businesses across the country to close their doors. The Dow index has now lost 3,200 points this week alone. It is now down nearly 10% this year. I think you're gonna see a lot of people lose their job or have dramatic impacts in their income. Restaurant businesses and food businesses are very tenuous. They're not, they don't have a lot of cash reserves and they go from week to week. So the COVID shutdowns are probably the biggest existential crisis that this industry has ever faced. Big national sporting events have been canceled, including all NCAA basketball tournaments, the NBA, National Hockey League, and American Hockey League, Major League Baseball, and NASCAR, all holding off on competing. The Boston Marathon, scheduled for April, postponed until September. And overnight, pro wrestling are putting on their weekly SmackDown show without a crowd. Several musicians are postponing their shows Cash Up postponed to a TBA date, Brad Paisley, some shows canceled, and Taylor Swift, her entire world tour canceled. As well, now Live Nation, the group responsible for bringing artists like Billie Eilish, Jason Aldean, and Post Malone to Nashville has announced several postponements. Cinemas around the world have been shuttered. Productions ground to a halt. Thousands of workers are now jobless. The challenge with COVID-19 is it's unlike any recession we've ever had before. Uh, we don't know if people are going to want to return to theaters. For the first time in history, studios are looking at near zero box office revenue for the foreseeable future. Florida went under a stay-at-home order this morning, but what's changed isn't clear. 
this beach is still open and religious services are allowed. Here in Houston, they have closed the playgrounds and the basketball courts, but officials say it has been a challenge getting people to obey those orders. And what about those who may try to straight up defy it? Viewer Denise on Facebook says, my son's work won't close. They said they'll pay the fines. Colin says, I'd love to see how the cops are going to enforce this. We are honestly more worried about what's going to happen to the business than we are about catching the virus. We, I would say, lost probably 75 to 80 percent of our income. We had the, the lowest growth rate we've ever had since I opened Farm Girls Doors 10 years ago almost. I'm sitting on almost $400,000 of debt right now just to open the door up. Congress passed the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP. The program provided $359 billion worth of federally backed business loans, which would be forgiven if the borrower spent 75% of the funding on payroll. They're very low interest loans. Again, I think the big catches or the, the big opportunity is it is gonna be forgivable. The whole goal is to help maintain employment within the community. We were able to help small businesses survive through PPP loans. President Trump's small business chief, Jovita Carranza, calls PPP one of the most successful and consequential federal disaster response programs in memory. The Small Business Administration and the Treasury Department announced yesterday that they will begin revealing the names of some businesses that receive loans from the PPP, a reversal of policy. There's some very wealthy recipients on the list. You've got country clubs, private jet companies, billionaires, family offices, and even Kanye West all receiving millions under that PPP program. Minority-owned businesses fell at the end of the line to receive Paycheck Protection Program loans from the federal government. Researchers at the Center for Responsible Lending say mainstream lenders prioritize their biggest clients, large to mid-sized businesses, which are primarily white-owned. While the federal government guarantees the PPP loans, it's the banks that actually put up the cash. A lot of these banks uh, we're helping their members first, right? So if you don't have a relationship with those people, then that's one way of you not knowing. A national online survey of 500 Black and Latinx small business owners found that only 12% of those who applied for the Paycheck Protection Program loans received the funds they asked for. At least six area, Chicago area suburbs are now requiring people to wear face masks in public. The CDC originally said don't wear a mask if you're not a healthcare worker, but it has since changed its tune, now encouraging people to wear face coverings in public. Experts recommend people try to stay at least six feet away from each other. Experts believe the virus is mainly spread through droplets that come out of your mouth or nose. When an infected person speaks, exhales, coughs, or sneezes, the droplets travel about three to six feet before gravity pulls them to the ground. CDC now recommends you avoid social gatherings of more than 10 people. Wearing a mask is protecting everybody else. So you're doing everybody else a favor. So the CDC says that uh, cloth masks should not replace social distancing. Even if you do wear a covering over your face, you need to stand still at least six feet from other people. Water, hand sanitizer, toilet paper, cleaning products, and other goods are being bought in high numbers as coronavirus fears grow. In grocery stores uh, scrambling to keep up with demand as panic buying empties many shelves. U.S. consumers have moved beyond simply proactive and reactive purchasing in health and wellness area and are really now what we classify as the pantry loading. Purell, the new gold standard. 
the hand sanitizer suddenly one of the most sought after products in the world. Causing sales to increase 470% in the first week of March 2020. The company that makes hand sanitizer Purell telling NBC News, we have dramatically increased production since the beginning of the year. What is available? Selling at a record pace. And the price gouging has begun. On Amazon, listings for a two pack going for $84.99. This seller advertising one bottle for $107. Amazon, eBay, and Walmart have all struggled to deal with this price gouging. They are removing them from their sites, but in some cases, not fast enough. Supermarkets impose new purchase limits to curb coronavirus hysteria. Some big retailers like Target, Kroger and Stop and Shop now rationing how much each shopper can buy. Well, tonight the News 4 I team has a different look at panic buying across the tri-state. While some folks are stocking up on bread and toilet paper, others are buying guns. In Alabama, rifles, handguns and ammunition are selling fast. Sometimes the line to buy is out the door. We have been seeing non-stop traffic, um, mostly for ammo, but selling out of the guns that we did have. You just hear rumors of things like this lasting a long time and people run out of work and run out of food and come knocking at your door. Paul Barnes felt that way. Now he's being trained to use his new pistol via Zoom. There's only so much food in the world. You can't buy toilet paper right now, so what happens when there's no more meat, greens and fruit and vegetables on, on the shelves at the store? Now you have to go out and hunt. Keep your distance and wear a mask. It's the advice that's been given to millions of people around the world. And following that recommendation has become, for many, the norm. But others refuse to comply. I got every problem when the government say we can't go out. That's a prohibition. I get it, it's real. I get it. People have the right to do whatever they want. But don't tell me what I have to do. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. My money is in this bank, and I'm going to take it out. Well, then you have to abide by the rules, that, and you have to have a mask on. Is, this is a state? It's not. Exactly. Businesses have the right to refuse service. Please not relaxed at all. Right here, people. No, 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 what about your sheep? There is no evidence that I can see that a pandemic exists. There is no evidence that SARS-CoV-2 has been purified and is unequivocally in existence. They're lying about the death tolls. I will take a chance to get a coronavirus whether the, better than shutting down this economy. Thousands of people took to the streets in Montreal the majority of whom were not wearing masks to protest the mandatory mask regulations. Maskless protesters causing a scene and putting other people at risk in Century City. They stormed through shopping malls and supermarkets to spread their message, but public health officers worry they could also spread the virus. With hundreds of anti-lockdown protesters clashing violently with police. Officers were punched and a horse smashed in the head with a flagpole. But it hasn't stopped them from making their message clear. They're now walking of hundreds down the street towards Parliament. Thousands of protesters took to the streets of various European cities on Saturday to denounce the COVID-19 restrictions put in place by the respective governments. On Saturday alone, there were protests in Croatia, Sweden, Finland, Belgium, Poland, Austria and more. Faced with rising infection rates, Germany has hinted it may reverse recent relaxations in restrictions. That didn't go over well with the over 20,000 protesters marching through the streets of the town of Kassel. But this group of people clearly don't believe in the science, they don't believe in the lockdown, and they don't 
consider it necessary to have social distancing. This band of a dozen officers came under attack for picking off one single protester. So rather than kettling the group, it was a case of asking people to go home, and if they didn't, arresting them. The volk will this Bundesrat not more. Sie will ihn weg. Er verstößt gegen Menschenrechte. Er verstößt gegen Völkerrecht. Telling us what to do, where to go shopping, where to go out, when not to go out, what to wear when you go out. I think they see themselves very much almost as freedom fighters. They see themselves as asserting their rights in pushing it back against uh, 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 an infringement on those rights. On average, it takes five to 10 years for a vaccine to reach FDA approval in the United States. In 2020, vaccines for COVID-19 have shattered previous records, going from development to approval in a matter of months. The speed was not at all at the sacrifice of safety. The speed was the reflection of extraordinary advances in the science of vaccine platform technology. Both Pfizer and Moderna announced that clinical trials show their vaccines are more than 90% effective. The technology used to make the new coronavirus vaccines is supposed to be designed so that it's easy to adapt for any mutations of the virus. But the CDC says vaccinated people should still use all the tools available to us, wear a mask, stay six feet away from others, and wash your hands. For side effects, Moderna points to this graph, which include fatigue, chills, headache, muscle pain, and pain at the injection site. According to the CDC, nearly 10 million doses have been distributed across the country. At least 1.9 million Americans have received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine that was authorized earlier this month. Far short of the 20 million doses officials predicted could be administered before the end of the year. The United States rollout of the coronavirus vaccine has been anything but smooth. When the rollout began in December 2020, state and local officials ran into a slew of logistical issues, and many locations lacked the resources to distribute vaccines smoothly. There's no shortage of vaccines. China's developed and approved four different domestic kinds. Millions of these doses are now being donated all over the world to more than 60 other countries. So we've got to get people vaccinated as quickly and as expeditiously as we possibly can until we get that, that herd immunity, as we say, which will require, in my opinion, about 75 to 80 percent of the population getting vaccinated. But for that to happen, though, more work is needed, not only on the vaccine, but also convincing some sections of society. In May, polling found that one in four Americans may refuse a coronavirus vaccine. France is one of the most vaccine skeptic nations in the world. In January, one poll said only 56% of people said they'd get the vaccine. But why are you against it? because I'm healthy. I don't need to take it. I just feel, I don't trust no chemicals. This, this whole thing about the vaccine and injection and stuff, I'm curious. I'm hearing there's, there's gonna be a chip in there. There's gonna be um, the actual virus pumped into us. Social media plays a huge part too. Facebook groups and pages serve to reinforce skepticism about vaccines. It's an absolute ticking time bomb. There can be no doubt about that at all. All the evidence shows that people are getting more fearful because of the information that they're receiving on social media and from non-trusted news sources. We want uh, our children be free and safe, not with the vaccine, definitely not with the vaccine. It's absolutely reasonable for people to ask questions and have questions and, and come to their physicians about things that they they think that they worry them. Uh, but also the part of personal responsibility is not to go into these outlandish theories. Not only these people are taking a decision on their own behalf, they're taking a decision on everyone else's behalf as well.
a year filled with the loss of life and the loss of living for all of us. But in the loss, we saw how much there was to gain in appreciation, respect, and gratitude. Finding light in the darkness. We no longer ask people uh, to stay at home. Uh, we're trying to get back much closer to normal. But it, our ability to dispense with the, the social distancing measures will depend on our continued ability to drive down the virus. New York City prepares to take its first steps toward reopening. As many as 400,000 people will be back on the job tomorrow. Somehow we have to find a way to get back together again. You have to be hopeful. You have to look at the positive. Try not to focus on negative and how far you have to go. And there's nothing, nothing, from the bottom of my heart I believe this, there's nothing we can't do when we do it together. So God bless you all. And please, God, give solace to all those people who lost someone. And may God protect our troops. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I look forward to seeing you.